spring allergies, spray cats. I'm answering viewers' questions tonight, so stick around. If you have any, I'll answer yours too. Come on, all you doggies, won't you walk with me? I'm the puppet, 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 puppet dog. Welcome to the Animal Intuitive Show. I'm Anna Angelo Webb, the Animal Intuitive, and I'm a professional animal communicator of over 17 years and a teacher. I am also nationally board certified in animal massage and acupressure, which has to do with our show tonight. And I just want to welcome anybody who's here. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And if you do have questions, I am not going to be doing live animal communication tonight. Um, I'm very sorry. I've been a little overloaded. I've mentioned in some previous episodes, I've been absent for a couple of weeks because I'm doing some continuing ed I have required to do for all this that I do. And, um, it's just important and I have my usual clients too so I have to kind of prioritize and I'm just unable to do it all and I don't want to come on here and be talking to people's pets and be kind of not not able to give it a hundred percent because I do give it a hundred percent even on the show when I do it for free so um <laughs> uh, I do appreciate you being here though and I will be back to that soon I'm just I don't have an exact date but um possibly within May so I'll keep you updated um, so in any case, I, I want to, um, talk today in response to some of your questions. Um, and it's so good to see everybody. Hi, good night, Owl. And, um, hello, Tammy. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. It's good to see you. Um, so yeah, I had a couple of questions come through and I wanted to, uh, show you a couple of those. So... Here we go. I have to see what you're seeing here. I'm not sure. There we go. Um, the first question came from Beth and she talked about, actually first we're gonna jump over here because I wanna get to first the acupressure. Um, so I had a, a question about someone's dog who has a chronic cough for the past few years and after multiple vet visits, um, Sorry, all this junk's over here. Um, after multiple vet visits, she's told that um, it's an allergy. So would that same point I'm doing in this video that was above here um, be something she could do for cough? So this was a video that I had done on acupressure for dogs and cats, heat, anxiety, allergy. So this is kind of a summer addressing video that I did on acupressure. Episode 27, I'll have a link for it below. But don't go look at it yet um because today we're going to talk about a couple of other things so i was letting her know that those points actually weren't exactly what you'd be doing um for cough uh now i just want to mention i am not a veterinarian and i am not here to treat or diagnose i just simply I'm giving you some educational information and you know if it's something that you think might help your pet please you know go ahead and do that and always talk to your vet though if your animal is having any kind of health issue or behavioral issue or whatever issue um, you know and see you know if you have any concerns make sure that you do that first so uh, I just do want to mention that some of the information I'm using in this video is from the Tallgrass Animal Acupressure Institute. It's kind of the general ideas. Plus, I have some other information I'm using. I'll show you. But if you're interested in learning acupressure or massage, um, or actually with Tallgrass, it's acupressure. That's where I went to acupressure school. Um, it's a great school, and I have a discount in my links below. I did massage through Northwest Animal Massage, and they're great, too. But if you're interested in any of the resources, Tallgrass has a lot of great resources plus classes. So, you know, take a look at that. So, uh, oh, am I freezing? Oh, no, I don't know why. Well, I don't know. I know that that's happened and then it fixes itself. I don't know in the replay. So I, sorry, guys, I don't, I have no idea why that's happening and I can't really do anything um, about it, unfortunately. Um, all right, so lung is um, one of the meridians on the animal's body. We have a meridian, a lung meridian as well. This is traditional Chinese medicine that I'm referring to. 
And I'm going to show you a picture of what that meridian looks like. Okay, so long meridian is right here. And it's actually the dark red line because there's lung and large intestine are called sisters. Um, they, I won't get too much into all that stuff tonight. I have other videos that go more into detail in the playlist uh, for acupressure, but the dotted line is large intestine and these are paired meridians. Thank you guys for letting me know. I I don't know what to do about it. I, I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> it's kind of at the mercy of um, probably YouTube. It could just be a lot of people are on, I don't know, online tonight. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, thank you for letting me know, but I'm hoping it'll resolve itself in the replay. So I apologize for that. Um, I don't think it's something I can fix. I think it's a an internet thing. Um, oh, okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. So this red line is lung. And the way this meridian works is it's uh, the lung is also called in Chinese fei. Uh, it's located in, in the chest. And um, the lung meridian kind of emerges from deep inside and then it comes out in this you can see in the diagram it's it is a little bit difficult to see totally in this picture on here let me expand it even more I'll cover myself up here um and you see it runs along let's see the whole thing for you um, it, it runs along down the arm and you can kind of see just the direction that it goes. Um, and it runs alongside parts of it to the, um, large intestine sister, which I'm, I'm not going to go into, but lung has certain functions. We think of things slightly different when we talk about traditional Chinese medicine. Um, but lungs have, the lung has several important jobs. We talk about um, how it, it governs qi and respiration. Now, qi is life force energy. Um, that's one way to, to phrase it. So it's it's going to be governing also respiration, which is the more traditional, like Western way of thinking about it. It opens to the nose. So you think about lung, we're inhaling through our nose. And it's related to the emotion of grief or prolonged sorrow. So if you, you know, ever have experienced prolonged sorrow or see someone with prolonged sorrow or see an animal who's grieving, there's just sort of a, um, a heaviness. Um, you, the, the sadness and grief can kind of constrict breathing or make it look labored. Um, you might turn into yourself during grief. And if you think about an animal who might be experiencing grief, there are lots of different situations, like, for instance, um, a beloved, you know, mate passing away or um, a mother who's had their puppies taken away. There's all sorts, you know, families letting a surrendering a dog or, you know, having to give a dog up or, you know, there's all these different situations somebody going off to college who the animal was close to. These are all situations where we might want to support the animal's um, lung meridian. And it also comes into play for allergies sometimes and just coughing for whatever the, the reason that there's coughing. It can be related to allergies, but at this time of year with spring being what it is and what it does to some animals and people, um, it can be an area of the body that gets more impacted. Now, it's also related to metal element. It's um, It belongs to metal element, I should say. And I've done videos that go into detail about the different elements. Metal element is one of the elements. So you might want to check that out afterward. The season um, t is fall. Um, so now just to kind of clarify, just because something is impacted, it, it just because the, the season for it is considered to be fall, it doesn't mean that there might not be points 
that relate to something that's going on at a different time of year, you know, so uh, we don't exclude it for that reason. Um, the long meridians um, time of day or influence um, in Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, it runs on a 24 hour clock. So each of um, the different meridians have a two hour window that's sort of, con it's considered their time of influence. So from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. is lung. So what could happen is you might notice that your dog or your cat is waking you up at three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning, or you know, sometime in that window. And that could be an indicator that that meridian is off balance. So, okay. Now, the next thing I wanna do is just go a little bit into some of the things that you might notice about that meridian being out of balance. So it could be respiratory conditions. It could be, you know, you're seeing um, asthma, heaves, or <laughs> heaves like um, heaving, you know, um, that kind of thing, or coughing. Um, there could be problems with the wrist, and that goes back to the way the meridian is, and because it's, it also has to do with the location of the meridian. So when we go back to this image, you can see that, okay, here you go, that um, the lung meridian and it, it ends like, and so does the large intestine around that wrist area. So um, you might also notice an increase in allergies. You also might notice a dry skin or dull coat or excessive mucus. Um, some and as I mentioned, some emotional things that might relate to the lung, <clears throat> excuse me, meridian being out of balance, would be like a long-term grief where it's not just sort of um, not that you wouldn't just want to support them anyway if they had it a, in you know recently had a loss, but also if you're seeing a long-term like prolonged grieving process that's kind of not letting up. <clears throat> it might show that that meridian is getting off balance. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, also, restlessness can be a sign of it and compulsive behaviors. Okay, so, and also uh, immune system issues and also <laughs> shoulder or um, thoracic pain in this area. So, just gonna take a sip of this. Okay, so I want to show you, I am getting some help here from a site, a couple of sites um, that I think are very helpful. Yin Yang House, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have any interest in acupressure, Yin Yang House is a great resource. I mean, they just have everything on there it's incredible it's it's right it's free it's on the internet i mean it's amazing i'll put the link too in the description for you and yang house um i'm going to show you first the point that i'm going to show you today long one i'm going to show it to you first what it looks like the the location of it on a human okay um it's also called central treasury and you can see why it's sort of central on the body. You have the, the point being located between the first and second ribs. This actually is a weird sort of way they illustrated it now that I'm looking at it. It's, it's hmm, this isn't the best because it is between the first and second ribs in the pectoral muscle. <clears throat> And it's a little bit off from the, um, if you go to the top of the humerus, so on your arm, if you go to the, here, let me, I'm actually going to bring up a better image of that. I was all excited to show you it on, on their site, but I don't know. I just don't think that's the best image of it now that I'm looking at it. Um, let me show you another one here and I'll give credit.
Yeah, th I think this one shows it better here. This is on peakmassager.com. So I want to give credit to them. And because this is for educational purposes, um, it's fair, fair use. So don't come after me. Um, so and I want to give them credit too. So it is located, it's sort of, you can see it here, how it's, they have the little point kind of off to the side, but it's between the first and second rib. And it's like directly straight over from the top of the arm, the humerus. And that point, sometimes you'll even find that it's a little bit like tender or sore. And I want to go back over here because there was something I wanted to show you in here. Okay. Oh, and it's also considered, an, it's an alarm point, which is, it's just a, um, it's an important um, grouping of points. I won't go too deeply into that either, but um, the alarm points can be really good when something's off. It can be a really good point to start with. Now, of course, if if an animal's, you know, this is just one point, you know, if an animal's having issues, you think that there's something off balance or even for maintenance and prevention, um, you know, doing a whole assessment with somebody who does acupressure or acupuncture is great. Um, but these are all points, you know, that I have on here, you know, as I'm kind of going along and doing more shows that you can you know, pick and choose, put together just to do sort of, you know, some um, more basic support, I would say. But if you if you're getting into especially more serious longer term issues, you know, it's definitely going to be helpful to get a full assessment. A veterinarian who's perhaps that's doing um, acupuncture can be great. And then there's people like me who are certified in acupressure. But again, we don't take the place of a veterinarian. OK, so. I'm also going to show this point to you on a dog um, diagram. Okay. Now, it's, this is kind of squinched up here, but you can kind of see um, how they have it laid out there. I feel like this, um, there we go. Yeah, it's kind of smushed, but you get the general idea. And then I also have a video here I'm going to play for you. This is of my dog, Cheyenne, who I did a really quick video today. Um, we actually discovered she had a tick right <laughs> before doing this and we had to mess with her. So she's a little unhappy um, because we had to get the tick key out and do that whole deal. Um, and it was like right on her like eye up here. But let me, let me go backward because this is jumped right into it. I'm going to back up. Okay. So there she is. So, you know, it's a little bit awkward too. She wouldn't sit and do it, but <laughs> so we had to do it on her side, but it's, it is directly over from the top of the arm going straight over. And it's not all the way, you know, to the middle. It's it's just a little bit over. You can feel that sort of dip. If you go over to that first rib and you follow it down, you follow the curve, you know, it goes down and it dips in and you can kind of feel the, for lack of a word, like the kind of meatiness of the muscle in there. Um, and then what you're going to do is... And I'm actually going to play it again because I know those go fast. Okay. See how I'm showing you like you, you go over and it kind of falls in. Then you start doing a circular motion, which you can do with like one to three fingers, depending how large the animal is that you're working on. And... You're going to do that for about 20 seconds and just, you know, do it in a nice circular motion, not too much pressure. It's a very light pressure. You do not need to press hard at all. Um, and before you do any acupressure points on an animal, 
it's really good for you yourself to get grounded. You know, take a few deep breaths, you know, slowly inhale, slowly exhale. You want to be grounded before you approach them because animals just generally don't don't respond well to our energy being kind of all up in excitable and up in the air and in our heads. Yeah, she has very thick hair. <laughs> yeah, she sometimes isn't the best model because of the fur, at least on her like chest and everything. Sometimes on her back it's better, but um, yeah, she's she's very furry. Uh, <laughs> So I actually had done that point on her yesterday and I had found that she needed that. She she has some issues at this time of year that she could benefit from. And she did this really nice like sigh, this exhale, which is a great indicator that an animal is benefiting from an acupressure point because basically it's showing you that there's been a, some kind of a release that the energy has shifted. So if there's been a, a, a stagnant um, energy, it's showing that it shifted. It's also, um, you know, what you're really doing there for this purpose with that sort of circular motion and on that alarm point is you're trying to um, kind of boost it, let's just say, or tonify it. It, it. it gets a little bit more, you know, complex when we're looking at things like we, we get into, you know, is this a heat condition or a cool condition? Is it deeper? Is it, you know, that when you get more into acupressure and you're really doing a whole assessment on an animal and the whole body kind of a holistic picture of them and um, that assessment goes a bit deeper. But for our purposes, you're basically just trying to give them some support. So, um, you know, look for that sign of release or, you know, if you don't get that, just, you know, do it intuitively. 20 seconds is good. You could do it a couple times a day, you know, space it out, maybe do something more in the morning and then the evening. It's great to work on these points during the time of the corresponding meridian, but the problem with this is it's 3 to 5 a.m. So if you're extremely dedicated and you want to get up at 3 to 5 a.m. and work on your path, I'm really impressed and, and let us know if you do that. I do want to know if people do that, because that's pretty pretty great of you. Um, although maybe if they wake you up at 3 a.m., you're up anyway, and you could just do it anyway. Um, there is a theory too that at the um, opposite side, so 3 to, 3 to 5 p.m., you could be working um, on that point. That's just a theory. Um, I, you know, there's no proof of it, of course, but it's just something that some people think, um, you know, could be beneficial too. So, you know, your pet and you're going to see what's working and, um, you know, just watch and see how they respond to it. I think that's also just a very relaxing point. I really find that to be just, you know, a good point when you're feeling stressed and you just need to kind of release, you know, that tension that you get and you get it up here in your body sometimes, um, it can be a really good point to do for yourself just to relax and you could do it before you work on your pet too. Um, okay. Any questions anybody has, please feel free to, you know, ask those. This is definitely one of those shows where there's no, um, limits on asking questions and jumping in. And I also wanted to mention just a couple of other things. These are just some things that I have found to be helpful for myself and my animals. Uh, air filter, a good um, HEPA filter to get those you know, particles of pollen and dust and even pet dander from the air can be good. Also probiotics, there have been um, studies to show that they can help with you know, some allergy issues. And something I want to mention that's really helped me with Cheyenne in particular is bovine colostrum. Some of you may be using that already. They have done studies on it. It's um, a great source of IgA antibodies, and these are known to help support and build up a healthy immune system. And it's something that's given to animals from their moms when they're from the mother's first milk and helps to nourish the newborn puppies or, or you know, and it 
um, can, I guess kittens, I've never had to think about this for cats to tell you the truth. It's never come up, but, um, I suppose, I don't know, actually, that's a really good question. I'm going to, while I'm talking, kind of Google it because I don't know why I didn't think about that. Colostrum for cats. This is bovine colostrum and they have found that that works great for dogs, bovine colostrum. So yeah, I'm seeing cats as I just quickly Google it. Um, some veterinary sites are saying that they do it with cats too. So that might be something to look into for your cat too. Uh, and maybe other animals. I'm not sure, but now I have found that this has helped my pet. Um, I'm actually going to ask my husband. <laughs> this is the one thing I actually tried to give myself a mental image to remember to bring the little thing into the room to show you um, and forgot of what I've used just to, it's an example of it there's other ones out there but it's one that I've been I have been finding has been very successful for my dog um so you might want to give it a shot and I'll show it to you it's from four leaf rover which is really cute that's the name of it and yeah I used it last year and it was great and I've started using it again this year um and it's been helpful with her with allergies so and you know once again this point is it it's one that you specifically think of a little bit more for the cough because of think about where it's located you know it's directly impacting lung but I have a couple of other points that I have linked below in the description that are on another video for allergies that you might want to check out Okay, so, and I, I'll put that link too in the description of that bovine colostrum since I think my husband might not get the message, but um, the next thing we're going to talk about, unless, oh, you, so your pets wake you up between three and five every morning. This would be a good use of my quiet time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Maybe they're trying to get you to, to work on their, their long point. There you go. <laughs> um, that's fun to be woken up at three to five. So <laughs> I wanted to talk about this other question that came up, kind of going to a, another topic. Um, and that is, okay, so that's asked, I take care of a few feral and some stray cats and I'm wondering how different it is to talk with an animal who doesn't live together with us. Maybe I would ask if my stray would not want to live inside. What are their differences in their attitudes about life in general? So this is a really great question. And I am happy to talk about this topic. Um, so she mentions that she, and that's great that you're taking care of some feral and straight cats. That's wonderful. So the actual process of communicating with, a feral or a stray cat really isn't any different than talking with a domesticated cat your or animal in general it's the same process you're getting grounded you're really connecting in with your heart space and your um often you'll visualize the animal if they're not in front of you you visualize them in your mind's eye while you're centered in that space, that heart space. <laughs> yeah, they've got you trained for treats. Good. <laughs> it's great. Um, so it's the same process and it's just as important to be very grounded when you're talking with stray animals as it is domesticated animals. Um, so what's probably going to be a little bit different is, um, you know, you, you may, if you don't know them already, if you're not in the habit of feeding them, you don't, you don't already have that like connection with them. You may, um, you know, just kind of go through a little bit more of a process of kind of, um, showing them who you are, what you're doing, what this is, and kind of, um, 
you know, offering to them this connection and, and the purpose of it. And, you know, so it's more about like what you're saying to them. You may say something like, I want to understand you better. You know, humans in general, we, we need to learn from you. And we think, you know, it'd be great to learn from you. Um, maybe there's some things that you want to communicate to them as well. Um, maybe you're concerned about, you know, you're seeing them go towards the road, for instance, and you want to help them understand that that's not going to be safe for them. Um, so, of course, the focus may be different. You may use it as an opportunity to explain to them that you want to help them. You may, you know, be wanting to let them know that you want to understand better what they want. So, you know, maybe you are thinking about letting them come inside and live with you and you want to have a conversation with them before you, you know, grab them or try to lure them into some kind of crate or something like that. Or it may be like, you know, if it was a, um, like a, a spay neuter kind of a project thing where you're trying to get, actually get them into a cage to take them and get them spayed or neutered. It's a great thing to talk with them about that you are, thank you. This is the stuff I was talking about before. I don't even know if you can really see it here, but um, it's this bovine colostrum. And this is the one I've, I've just used. I have found it to be very helpful. I have a link below. And, uh, you know, it is an affiliate link. But so I get like a, you know, penny for referring you. <laughs> but, you know, that's in the site that I'm linking you to on Amazon. But um, I honestly, that's the one I've used. I can't speak to any other ones. That's the only reason I'm showing you that one. But I'm sure there are other ones too that could be good, but. Also talk to your vet and see if that's going to be beneficial for your pet. Make sure that the veterinarian is dealing with their allergies too. Hopefully, you know, you found a good one. I, I like the holistic ones personally because I feel like they will look more at things like that that are perhaps maybe not going to have things that could throw your animal out of balance. Anyway, <laughs> so... um back to the stray cats. So you may want to prepare them for perhaps being picked up and going to a veterinary hospital and showing them all this, like showing them the process of, um, you know, you know, first, first probably talking to them about the benefits of it and, you know, perhaps coming at it from like, say you get pregnant and you're now trying to deal with feeding yourself plus these kittens and it's going to put a strain on your body and maybe the kittens aren't going to do well. And, um, you know, could we perhaps get you to just do this? And you would be surprised at what animals will do just because you explain it to them and show them the reason for it. Feeling is very important when we communicate with animals. I talk about that all the time. It's very important not just to show them images or like videos of things you need to connect feeling to it so you would want to show them that you know the idea of this is love that we love you we want to help you we want to take care of you and you know this is how we we can do that is to prevent you from um you know getting now the mail that's <laughs> That's maybe another story, the benefit of <laughs> getting a male cat neutered. Um, that's a really good topic. I, you know, I've never thought about that, what, how you would explain that to them. Um, you know, I guess you could put it for the greater good um, of them, perhaps, um, that, you know, it, it, I think there is something about, you know, I don't know, I don't know this for sure, but there may be something about like male health benefits, getting them neutered. So you might want to mention that, um, you know, to some extent they may be greater risk taker takers as, you know, if they're not neutered and that could shorten their life or, you know, it might be something to look up, you know, prepare your argument you know, before you go in. Um, but explaining to them and maybe just the greater good that they're, you know, that, 
we are talking to them on a soul level. So there's like the kind of surface what's going on in their life in the immediate, even with domesticated animals. Like you're talking about a cat maybe that wants a lot of snacks. I have a cat like that. She always wants snacks, treats like all day long. And I need to explain to her, you know, this isn't, um, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, health issues and, um, you know, you just, you need to keep your weight, you know, it's just lots of reasons for it. There's also like the soul level though. Those are sort of like the behaviors that are going on right now, those surfacey more things, but then there's the soul level and you can connect with an animal on that level. So, ta- so don't discount that, that they, um, maybe invested in that understanding that there's like a bigger picture that there's we don't want a bunch of little kittens running around who don't have homes and starve to death perhaps um or get hit by cars or you know etc or picked up excuse me by other animals that might hurt them um so you may so going back to the issue of wanting to live inside or outside it's a great thing to talk to them about that and explaining to them and showing them what life would be like inside and get the feeling from them you know what how do you feel about that what is it like for you to think about being indoors and talking to them about your priorities like if you're somebody who's gonna bring a cat in and you don't want them to be indoor outdoor it's good to talk to them about that that that's not going to be an option for you to go back outside once you're in. So being honest about that and letting them know that and finding out what their feelings are about that. And, um, you know, it's important to listen, understand from their perspective what it feels like for them. We may think it's the best thing in the world that they come inside, they don't go outside. That's the the you know, kind of the going philosophy, you know, we don't want animals running around. Um, They can get hurt and sick and, but we, if we want to respect them as sentient beings, it's important for us to also listen to them and understand what their perspective is on things like that. Um, So you may be dealing with an animal and I've talked about it on the show before, that just, you know, they really, really, that's just not their journey. They're really resistant to that. And they may be very unhappy inside. And I'm not promoting that, but it's just, we have to be honest. We can't just make things the way we want them to be because that's (laughs) the way we want them to be if that's how the animal feels. So if there's any questions, please let me know. Or if you have any thoughts on any of this, if you don't agree with it, if there's anything you want to say, let me know. Um, also if you post things like that in the comments, as long as, you know, if you have an opposing view, please feel free to put it there. But I just ask that you be respectful. That's all. Um, that's, what's important. It's how you think, how you say things. We're going to have different opinions and that's okay, but it's just that we are able to talk about them and share them. So I hope I haven't forgotten anything about, you know, that about stray cats that I wanted to talk about. I've had it's interesting. I've had a few lately and I actually a couple weeks ago, I think it might've been the last show. I'm not sure. I talked about a mother cat and a daughter cat who are strays. However, I would say sort of feral strays, but I don't know this person, this individual who's I've worked with before she feeds them. They live, um, they do what they please. Like they come and go, but they don't come inside and they come to her back area And I talked about it in another show and they kind of went off for a little while and she was a little bit worried about it. She wanted to know where they were and that was what I was working on with her. And I've had other people recently too um, who are taking care of animals and dealing with that. Um, You know, I, I actually wanted someone to come on and I didn't think about it until the very last minute. Um, I don't think she'd mind me speaking generally. I, she just, I don't think she got my message. I sent it like a couple hours ago. I just completely forgot to, I, it occurred to me, this person has a cat that she's been taken care of, but she had to move. And it was really difficult because she had formed a bond and he would come in, um, but he wouldn't, he would want to go out like, I feel like really, I want to say at like three o'clock in the morning, it was actually kind of hard on them because he kept waking them up to go back out. Um, but he, 
they developed a connection with him and then had to move, although they didn't have to move that far. So they're able to go back and check in on him. And there's some people in the neighborhood who are also taking care of him, like feeding him and just seeing how he's doing. So we talked about the potential. Um, he didn't, he, I mean, he would, he was completely resistant right now to staying with them and going to live where he was going to go because he wouldn't been able to wander outside there. Um, so we talked about that and what to, you know, some perspective on that and potential for maybe the future of, of things shifting. So, um, you know, sometimes things aren't what we think. Sometimes people think, well, these cats definitely, once they get inside, they're going to be, they don't even realize. So, um, yeah, I was just, it's funny. I was just going to kind of talk about that. <coughs> um, excuse me. The, you're saying the trauma of, for the feral cat, sometimes of just getting captured, it can take them a long time to get over that. So yeah, I was just going to say something about that. I kind of lost my thought, but yeah, some of them, we think that it's going to be the best thing for them to come live with us. And they don't always feel that way. It's not always you know, our will isn't always theirs and it may be very difficult on them. So, um, that's a really great point. So, you know, let us know too in the comments, if you've had, um, successful situations where you just captured a stray, one of my first cats, he was young though. He was like a, a youngster, but he was outside and I caught him and brought, and he was one of our, you know, wonderful cat stories. And it went really well, but he was young. So it doesn't always work out like that. Well, like that. And I have um, a show about that too. I may have two shows that my mother had a cat that she um, was dealing with like that who would come and go. And he just, he just couldn't, he couldn't get into the idea of being like held or handled or touched. And he was a little bit aggressive. Um, unfortunately, I haven't actually posted about this, but he, um, he just wasn't doing well. You know, they, my mother tried to, the vet tried to rehabilitate him and his name was like Mr. Kitty. He wanted to be called Mr. But, um, he went to the vet and she, tr she actually tried to work with him. She wanted to do what she could, but he was actually very like s clawing at my mother's legs and her, and he was really difficult. She couldn't, like come and go and her other pets couldn't come and go. It was getting really difficult. So she, and she also had like an arm injury and it was just really getting bad. So the vet tried to take him and like rehabilitate him. Um, and it didn't work. And unfortunately she ended up having to put him down. So, you know, some of these stories are, you know, to us sad. We also have to think about their journey. We don't know everything in the world and the universe that goes on, but, um, you know, sometimes it doesn't go well. And that was sad. We were sad, very sad about that. But, um, so, but let us know out there if you've had successful stray cat rehabilitation, feral cat rehabilitation, or just thoughts on any of this. And I appreciate everybody who's here tonight and I appreciate all your comments and thank you for your patience while I'm doing my learning. Um, process here which will be over soon so <laughs> I'm, I'm like halfway through almost and I'm I'm you know hopefully by the end of the May I'll have this this end of things all done and then I'm on to the social work continuing end that I have to do so um balance I'm trying to keep some balance so thank you all for being here and you know I always forget to say like subscribe share hit the bell so you're notified of upcoming shows um, that is what is helping the show to grow. We really, I, I really appreciate it. It's kind of like, you know, YouTube doesn't help the show out a lot. I don't, I looked at the, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but it's a niche show and you know, they don't make money on these types of things. So, um, it, it I really appreciate it. I don't make anything on the show at this point in time and it'll be a long while before if, if I ever do. So, um, I just appreciate you sharing it and liking. And um, I have a website link in the description. I do private clients, um, distance and um, in person, although that's a little dicey until things completely kind of pan out. But I do go to people's homes locally. 
Um, although right now it's a little bit up in the air, but I do distance work. So um, particularly for um, animal com communication and classes as well. So um, check out the website, intuitivetouchanimalcare.com. And I hope you have a wonderful, thank you everyone in the chat too. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful evening and God bless.